Welcome to The Traveling Professors. I'm Professor Bob. And I'm Professor Sherry. And together, we are The The Traveling Traveling Professors. Professors. Welcome to show 61 of The Traveling Professors. Today, Sherry and I are going to take you to the main chateau at Amboise. But we're not going to do the whole chateau. There's just too much. So we're going to break it into two parts. This part will be about the Renaissance era, period of Louis XI, particularly Charles VIII, Francis I, and Henry II. Our next show, we'll deal with the Orleans period, the more modern period, and then we'll go on out into the garden region. Let's, let's pick up where we left off last time. Well, our last show on Amboise ended here at the chapel of St. Hubert. Today, we're going to head down to the Tour de la Louvetine, take a nice view of the Loire Valley, and then come across here and then deal with the Renaissance Palace of Charles VIII. There's a little nicer view of the Palace of Charles VIII, Renaissance construction, and we will literally be going all over this front section. Here is what the palace area looks like as far as the model is concerned. Here's the chapel, and so we're going to be going down this direction, and then over. We have to kind of jog in and then enter the palace. Of course, it's a lot smaller. As you can see, a huge section of this is completely gone. There's not really much change to the Renaissance palace, but the intermediate buildings along in here, and even the height of the, some of the towers, has changed significantly. Here's a nice way of looking at it. The red is what still exists. So you see on this stretch of wall where the chapel is, that's literally all gone. And then you come down here to the tower, and you see that about half of the tower was taken off. And then they took off a whole section of the next part and part of a building. And then in this middle region in here, that's completely gone. Now that was part of a moat, a dry moat. But this area where the dry moat used to be is really important because that's where Charles VIII died. He was going to a tennis match and he was going very hurriedly and forgot the duck and hit his head on the lintel and died a few hours later. Well, exiting the chapel of St. Hubert, we look this direction, and you can see the two shortened towers. We're heading to the big one, which is the Louvetine Tower. From that vantage point, looking back, you can see the chapel, and you can see the town. Now, this tower is quite spectacular, very large, so we can get up here on top of it. And you could have put a catapult here and literally just turned it any way you needed to, to go, because all it really needs to protect you from is the village down below, and of course the bridge directly across to the island. So here's the view from this turret. And there's the the village. And then here is a view of the Loire and the wonderful bridge going to the island of gold. And then we're moving over a little bit, getting another shot of it, and continue to get the view. And then here's looking down the side, the fortification to the palace. And again, you can see the river down below. Here's a nice video version of this, so you can watch the river in action. here I am as far over to the chateau as I can get, taking a shot back towards the tower with the flags flying and whatever. And yes, I noticed that it's cloudy. Those were the pictures that we had from 2016, but we didn't retake this picture when we were back in 2021. And then I wanted to show you this shot. Here's a picture of the bridge that you've seen many times. But one thing that was different when we went in 2021 is they had what was called a histopad. It was a iPad like device that you got with your ticket and it had there were places there were markers where you could press a button and it would scan them and give you the information or it would show you mock-ups of what everything looked like and it would give you sound music all sorts of things and in some of the rooms where objects that had been in that room were in other museums they had gotten permission to photograph them so that they could then be presented as part of the the show So this was really spectacular to use. So here is the example of that bridge shot that I took. 
So you notice you have these little spots on it where you can mark and it will then give you audio cues. But you notice the bridge gate, the heavy gate that's on either side of this section of the bridge for defensive purposes. I mean, even if you get through that gatehouse, you know, you, you've got this kind of a barbican area on the inside. And there's another one on the other side. You, you would have this in all the rooms. They would show you mock-ups of the room. Very, very handy. And I don't believe it was any more expensive. I think it went with your ticket. If it was a cost, it was, would have been something like one or two euros. To get into the chateau, we have to go into this area right here. This is the Renaissance Palace with a couple of rooms that are over on this side. So when you get a little closer, there's the entrance to the Royal Lodge. Then you come in and you have this little entry area, which is actually part of the guard's room. Uh, on the wall, they have this uh, ceramic salamander, which is the emblem of Francis I. They also have a nice shield, a two-handed sword on the wall. And then you exit from this area. You'll be going out to what is known as the guard's walkway. Now, if you're outside the chateau, the guard's walkway is right here, all across this region right here. Then we'll go into another tower room, go up, and then into the area where you have the council chamber or the throne room. Here is the doors that lead out to the guard's walkway, and then here is the, the view. This is a view down one end, and when you're on the tour, eventually you will come back up from around the backside and on the other side of that fence. And then here's a little closer view. You can see the, the entrance. The people coming up will come through there, and then you can look out, and there's the other, one of the other turrets, the other towers. Nice view of the good old gargoyles. And there's some people looking down onto the river. Nice view, of course, of the bridge. And then looking back the other direction, that is the door that leads you into what was in 2016 marked as another guard room. Uh, it's been changed to be known as the pillar room instead. So let's go to the pillar room. So here is the other guard room, which is now called the pillar room. It's pretty obvious why they call it the pillar room. This entire room is, the ceiling is held up by this, what is known as a Gothic palm central pillar. Now, if you look on the wall, You'll notice that there is the map that shows what still exists and what was torn down that I've been using throughout this presentation. And then they have a couple of suits of armor in there as well. They also have a strong box, and I love these strong boxes. They have all sorts of ways of locking them and secret compartments and all sorts of other stuff. Well, when you leave the pillar room, your next stop is the drummer's room, which used to be the King Charles VIII's dressing room. Here's the stairway, allowing you to maneuver in the different levels of the palace. So we're going up to the drummer's room. Now the drummer's room that you see here was originally King Charles VIII's dressing room. Now what you see on the wall, the tapestry, is from the 1500s, and it's from the Flemish area, and it shows Darius's family paying homage to Alexander the Great. There is a chair in there, and that chair is the is Cardinal Georges d'Amboise, who was the bishop. It's his bishop's chair from 1640 to 1510. And he organized the wedding of Charles VIII and Anne of Brittany in 1491 and was eventually named Prime Minister under Charles' successor in 1498. They also have a couple of pictures of Charles VIII and Anne of Brittany. Also in the room is this. It's a spectacular Book of Hours, which is a compilation of prayers and, relig and religious holidays that actually belonged to Charles VIII. It's modeled after an 1484 original that's now in the National Library in Madrid. Look at the ceiling. The ceiling is your standard upper floor ceiling that you see in these type of buildings. Now we come to the Great Hall. Now during the Renaissance, the King of France spread his power progressively throughout the kingdom, traveling, notably by ensuring the loyalty of his governors, his officials, and his clerical dignitaries. He also insisted that senior lords live for many months by his side, accompanied by their wives. Thus women entered the royal court. This council chamber, or Great Hall, is one of the first of this size to serve as a setting for these events. 
we've just come into the room. You're looking down. You see the pillars. We're going to get some close-ups of all this a little bit later on to see the people sitting in the bench. Well, here's a close-up of that bench. It's a it's known as a shire. These are benches that are decorated in this Gothic style linen fold. There's several of them in the whole room. We went down a little bit further because we could hear footsteps, and here comes a whole group. And so they're going to gather around the main Renaissance fireplace at this one end, and we'll be there for a little bit. So Sherry and I walked around taking pictures of different things. Now, to go back to that the histopad, this is the view that they have of the audience room from 1518. Now, they have the throne down at the back wall, and they have all of the people scattered around, and there's different te- pieces of furniture in here as well. Well, then ultimately, that group left. You know, the downside of groups is you're only a certain amount of time in an area, the guide will talk about something and then move on. And if you're trying to get pictures, it makes it difficult because you have to wait till the end or get there early. It's a little more confusing. When you're on your own, you take plenty of time. So after they left, here is the nice Renaissance fireplace, which is actually used to heat the room. And next to it is where they keep all of the wood. And to give you an idea of the size, look look at Sherry standing next to the trug. And then they have the throne. They have this little throne for the king to sit on with the fleur de lis. Uh, you're not supposed to sit on it. Uh, at Oise, they have a mock-up of ones that you can sit on if you want to have that picture taken. But this was uh, Sherry taking a picture of me uh, standing by the throne. And then the windows, this is what the windows looked like on either side of it. I would imagine these are more modern, been put into place because of damage from World War II. Now, if you go out into the central area, the columns that hold up the ceiling, the different areas, one of them has the coat of arms or the symbol of Brittany, and the other one has the coat of arms of Charles VIII. And then you see the beautiful ceiling. And then all around, at the end of of where those arches come down to the brick wall, you have all of these faces and, and creatures. Here we have one with big ears. Here we have a beautiful lady. Here we have some... Rats, I assume, eating fruit, and then one with some flowers. So there's all sorts of different elements that are in this room that are quite beautiful to look at. And then you go to the back and you see the other Renaissance fireplace. As we exit the council room or the great hall, we enter what is known originally as the great bedroom. It was originally a state room where the king would receive the people in his entourage. It's also been called the cupbearer's room. If you look across to the far side, You'll see the tapestries and the cupboards, and there's tables when there's a lot of ceramics in here as well. Here's a close-up of the tapestry, and then here is a close-up of the cabinet with the pottery in the corner. And then this is the Italian table that was in the picture with all sorts of adjustments. If you turn around and you look the other direction, this tapestry here on the wall, that is known as Queen Esther's Banquet. All of these tapestry are done by a man named Aubusson, and they were done in the 1600s. And then here is the tapestry that's on the back of this wall, and there's another table. The wall opposite basically just has one gigantic tapestry, which is what you see here and it has some more furnishings. And then here's the, what the ceiling looks like with the beams. Leaving the great bedroom, or the cupbearer's room, we now come to the king's bedroom. Now, this area was occupied by King Francis I, Henry II, and Henry II's wife, Catherine de' Medici. And this room has changed drastically since we were there in 2016. So I want to show you the 2016 pictures first because I believe it's it's a better view of the bedchamber. So as you come into the room, you see the bedchamber, the far wall, and you get up close to it. You see the fabric around it. You walk off to one side and there's a little prayer area where you can kneel and pray to the crucifix. Nice chair. Wonderful strong box. And there's a good view of the strong box itself. And then to look at the bed itself, there's the fabric on the side of the bed. And you get close of, it's actually the fabric of Henry II. Of course, poor Henry II died in a jousting accident. Now, if you look at the other end of the room, you see you have a, a tapestry on the wall. You have some of the Renaissance chairs. And you would have that also on the other wall. So that's how it appeared in 2016. Very nice, very easy to maneuver through. However, when you come in in 2021, 
everything is completely different. Where the bed was originally, that's no longer there. The bed's at the opposite end of the room. What was put on the area where you had the original bed is a gigantic painting of the death of Leonardo da Vinci with a couple of chairs. Then when you turn the other direction and you look at where the tapestry had been, well, now they have the bed chamber stuck in the corner and they have the red chair and then they have a bench with a tapestry. So the strong box is still at the foot of the bed too, but the prayer area is not in that section. So it's, it's kind of a complete change and having da Vinci's death, which of course shows Francis the first standing next to him, which wasn't accurate at all. And that painting was done in 1781 by an artist known as Mangeret. Our last room of the day is a very small room. During the Renaissance, it was known as the Franciscan Antechamber. After the chateau changed hands and the Orleans family took it over, the area became known as the guard robe, king, where the king and queen's garments were kept in close proximity to their bedchamber. So when you come through the door, you see the beautiful Renaissance fireplace. And then you look up above and you see it's a small room. So we just have a, a very simple chandelier with wood ceiling. And then we have one wall of the, uh, the way from the entrance you have is tapestry. It's a closer view of the tapestry. And then you look down to the end of the room, another tapestry, and we have several other of those Renaissance chairs. And then you go out through that exit and we end up in the area of the chateau that covers the more modern period, the Orleans period. Our next show will cover the Orléans section, and then we'll go out into the garden of the Chateau de Amboise. Sherry and I hope you enjoyed the tour. Please come by our YouTube channel at Bob Packett, and please subscribe and leave some comments. Thank you very much. I've been doing podcasting on history for over 15 years. I've got over 4,000 shows, and I've done CDs, which, of course, can be sent out as USBs. So if you would really like to get more on history for free, then come by my website, as you see here, historyaccordingtobob.com, and see what's there. So thank you very much again.